Number 17 then from the 2015 Advanced Tire. Second last question, it's a fairly harmless looking thing this for 9 marks, it looks fairly straightforward. Obviously we're going to be using partial fractions and integration. But first thing to notice is, that's power 3, so is the top, so that you can extract some of that. You can either divide it in, because you can see it's only going to go in twice. You can either set out a division, or you could just subtract it twice, which is essentially the same thing. But either way, I'll need to know what this comes to. So I'll need to multiply that out. So I'll have an x cubed, a minus 3x squared, a plus x, and a minus 3. So I can either divide that into this, or just realise that it's the same as saying how many times it does it go in. Just take it out twice. Just set out the subtraction. So I've got 2x cubed and no x squared, and a minus x and a minus 1. And I know I can get two of them out of it, so I'll just double this. I've got 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 2x, and that'll be minus 6. And I'll do a subtract of that, because that'll be two of them gone. And then that gives me negative 1, that's going to be plus 5, minus 1, minus, that's minus 3x. Minus, minus, that will be 6x squared. So what that says is, that's equivalent to the integral of 2, because it went in twice, with that left over. With 6x squared minus 3x plus 5 over the same thing. But I'd rather have it factorised now, because I'm going to use partial fractions. But it's a wee bit better. But now I'll have to use partial fractions to sort that out. So we'll say, well... Let that be equal to a over x minus 3. Irreducible quadratic here, so make that bx plus c over x squared plus 1. I don't know why I put a bracket around that one. Well, you can have one as well. So if you make it equal to that, that means we can say that a times x squared plus 1 plus bx plus c times the x minus 3 should equal the numerator here, 6x squared minus 3x plus 5. I should have said that equals this thing here. Right, well I can use a wee knockout. I can let x equal 3, and that would knock out this term because that's 0. So if x is equal to 3, then I've got 3 squared and 1, that's 9 and 1. I've got 10 lots of a equals, and I've got to go through all this. So I've got 9, 54. That'll be minus a 9 plus a 5. So that very handily is 50, which means that a equals 5. Now that I've run out of knockout values, I'll just compare the x squared terms. That would be simpler because the only way of making x squared out of this would be to have an a and a b. a and b form the x squareds, so a and b must make 6. So since a is 5, that means that b is equal to 1. And the other easy one usually is the constant. Forming the constant term 5 at the end, I've got an a and I've got minus 3c. And that should make a 5, but a is 5. So that means that 3c is worth nothing, so c is equal to 0. So now I've got it. I've got the integral of 2 plus, and what was a again? 5 over x minus 3. And is it positive? Good. Plus, and that's just an x. x, because it's x plus nothing. x over x squared plus 1. It's looking better all the time. Well, in fact, it's done now, isn't it? Because these three parts readily integrate. That goes back up to 2x. That's a wee log. That'll be 5 ln of x minus 3. And, without having to do any substitutions, by inspection, the numerator of this is related to the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of the denominator is 2x, so that's half of the derivative of the denominator. So that would just be a half of ln of the denominator. Plus c. By inspection. Logarithm of that would be 1 over that, with its derivative on top. But that was only half of its derivative that was on top. One other thing I could do, just to be a wee bit cheeky, because x is greater than 3 after all, is just to defiantly turn them back into wee round brackets. 
because these things are never going to be negative. If x is greater than 3, that's positive. And that's always positive anyway. You can't get x squared plus 1 to go negative. And I'll have to rub this out of the way so I can get my c to come in. There we go. Just not sure if in the exam you'd actually have to write by inspection because that's such an obvious one. The only other thing I can think of is maybe I should write down this thing equals it before I do that expansion. Essentially it was quite quick for nine marks.